So will you stand with me and welcome this man of God? Amen. Apostle Leon, love you. Amen. 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 Give a hand to the King of Kings and the Lord of Glory. <laughs> Look at somebody say it's all about him. Amen. It's all about him. Amen. And so, amen. Awesome to be with you here in Dallas, Texas this morning and be able to worship with you guys. How many enjoyed that worship? Amen. Let's give them a hand. They're awesome. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says give credit, where, give honor and credit where it's due. Amen. And it's, it's due them. Amen. They prepare as much to lead in worship as ministers do to preach a message. Yeah. Amen. You labor, you labor over the spirit and you labor over the atmosphere. Amen. To be able to lead people into the throne room. Amen. Even though you can freely come, for some reason, people just don't know how to get there. Amen. So praise God for worship leaders, amen, that are, you might say, present truth, kingdom worship leaders, apostolic worship leaders, amen, that take you into the presence of the Lord, amen. And I, I can feel that presence this morning, and God, God is so good, amen. Bishop Hammond sends his love and greetings to all of you here, amen, and he's uh, ministering in New York uh, area this morning, and um, my wife sends her love and blessings. She's not been able to be out here with me for quite a few years as well. We've been going through a lot of physical challenges there, but God is faithful. Amen. And, uh, and he's blessed us. And so, amen, we just continue to plow and to do what God says to do. We have a 50-acre campus there in Brazil's Indiana, and we're developing another headquarters for Christian International in that central part of the United States. And so it's been a cultivating, plowing process, amen. But we've reached literally thousands of people, amen, from the, the fields there. And so we're kind of out in the country, amen. I don't know why God chooses to put you out in the country. I don't even like the country. <laughs> You know what I mean? I just, I, I'm more of a city guy, amen, but God chose to put me out in the country, amen, and uh, so we reach cities from there. People come there from all over the world, and it's, it's, it's been great. Uh, we just want to give honor to your pastors, apostle, prophet team this morning, and for you, they're pastors, and they're excellent pastors, but in the body of Christ corporate, uh, they're known as apostle prophets, and uh, they strengthen churches, they help plant churches, and they help uh, pastors, you know, get clarity and vision and purpose and destiny, amen. And uh, Prophet Estandi is probably one of the best I shared with you Friday night as far as discovering purpose, and there's only a handful of people that I know that really know how to help you discern and get to your that actual purpose, that that person that God created you to be. You don't build purpose or, you know, you don't learn purpose. Purpose is who you are. Amen. And, and she, by the Spirit, has really, God has really used her with the anointing to help you discover that purpose in your life. Amen. And I pray that all of you, all of you discover that. Praise the Lord. I'm going to uh, deliver a word to us this morning, and uh, time's going to go very fast. I know that it is. Amen. And we're going to stay on target the best that we can. Amen. But at the same time, we want to minister by the Spirit as the Holy Spirit leads and directs us. Amen. Uh, it's very important, very important that we minister to your pastors this morning. Uh, just so you know, I have probably not prophesied over them in probably 10 years. And... Um, Amen. But it's important that we prophesy or that we minister to them. Amen. Because what we minister to them is like the anointing oil on the head of Aaron. It goes all the way down from the head, all the way to the hems of the garment, all the way down to the body. Amen. So whatever God says to them as the body, you just reach out and you take that for you. Amen. Because what does God does in the head, he does in the whole body. Amen. And so I began sharing Friday night uh, three words, uh, prophetic words that I thought were very key uh, for us as churches to zero in on this year. And one of them was from Bishop Hammond uh, in a nutshell. And Bishop Hammond said that as you co-labor with God this year, in other words, you work the word that God has given you and you, and you believe that word and, and you are a doer of the word and not just a hearer only of the word, amen, and you mix faith with the word and you're obedient to his commands, Bishop Hammond decreed that it will be a glorious and a prosperous year. Amen. I want to decree that over our congregation this morning. 
amen, from this time forth, that your faith will be activated, that this will be a glorious and a prosperous year. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now, I, I was sharing Friday night, I spoke with Bishop just a couple days ago, and he was sharing with me, amen, that I have not really seen the glorious, prosperous part yet, but he said, I'm going to keep believing it and decreeing it amen. until it happens. Amen. Amen. So when you hear a word of the Lord and you receive a word, amen, you keep decreeing that, you keep believing that, you keep your faith activated with that until you break through. Amen. Look at somebody say until. until. Amen. And so we don't give up in the middle of the process. We labor and we break through. But he said it will be a glorious and a prosperous year. So I'm decreeing it'll be a glorious and a prosperous year over every business person, over every business, over every entrepreneur, over every minister, over every family, every household, amen, over LifeGate, amen, that all that you guys touch this year, amen, will begin to prosper and will begin to break through and it'll be a glorious celebration. Amen. I noticed in our, in, in our decrees over our offerings, amen, one of the decrees that you just made was gifts and surprises. Yes. You know, you never know how God is going to do that. It was uh, um, several years ago that I was going to the Philippines to do a conference, and my son-in-law uh, just I wanted to take him along with me, but it was going to cost him an extra $1,500 that they didn't have, and I didn't want them to go in debt for it. And, and But he prayed about it, and I really felt like the Lord said, go ahead, get the money, because he's supposed to go. And so I did. And when we uh, was in the airport in Japan, uh, the uh, get ready to transfer to go on to uh, Manila, Philippines. We uh, the place was so packed, hundreds of thousands of people, and it's different because they stand at guard with machine guns, and and it's a scary place. And so, uh, I told my son, I'll watch the luggage, and you go to the restroom, and then I'll go, and you watch the luggage, and we'll, you know. And uh, so he went in the restroom, and he came back out, and he bent over, and he said, uh, I found some money. I said, shh. <laughs> <laughs> I said, thousands of people here with machine guns. Shh. Don't you know everybody lost that money at one time? <laughs> I said, was there anybody in the bathroom? He said, yeah, two other people. I said, did you, did you offer it? He said, yeah, I held it up. Nobody claimed it. And so... Oh, what'd you do? I put it in my pocket. Well, keep it there. <laughs> <laughs> and when we got on the airplane, <laughs> you know, and, and they shifted our flight to first class, amen. But while a gift, that was another surprise. And so, but while we're on the all of a sudden I asked him, I said, How much money did you find? And so he said, I don't know. I said, Well, let's check it out. <laughs> Safe. <laughs> amen. And we had borrowed $1,500. And when he counted that money, there were 15 100 new dollar, bill, uh, new dollar, dollar bills. Amen? Say, guess them with the prizes. <laughs> amen. So, amen. So God can do that, but you, you have to use wisdom with it at the same time. Amen? But it's going to be a glorious and a prosperous year. Amen? Don't look at the negative. Don't look at what is not. Don't look at what the, the casualty has been. Amen? Look at the word of the Lord and decree the promises of God. His promises are yes and amen. Amen? And they are already reserved and set aside for life gate, for every family, for every business, and everyone uh, at the hearing of my voice this morning. Apostle Tom Hammond had a different word, but yet it was a word that we have preached and taught much on, and it was dealing with gates, amen, and the gate of breakthrough and the gateway, amen, and that when you come to your gate, there, there is opposition that is already positioned to say that you can't come in here. Yes. Yes. Come, on. come on. And so he released a word battling at your gate this year. Come on, in 2008, we preached on gates and breaking through your gates, but a lot, a lot of Christians, a lot of brothers and sisters turned from their gate because of opposition and impossibilities, but the Bible says with God, all things are possible. He's singing that song this morning, amen, that all things are possible to those who just believe, amen. And so he said to begin to wage a war 
at your gate. Refuse to turn around. Amen. Refuse to go back. I, I went through what I've done to get here, and I'm not turning back, and no devil in hell is going to stop me, and there's no devil big enough. There's no Goliath big enough. Come on now. And begin to battle at your gate. Come on now. And take authority over the giants that uh, the enemy has tried to assign to your gates. Giants like intimidation, humiliation, accusation, depression, deception, manipulation, pollution, delusion. All of these things are assigned, amen, to say you can't come in here. Amen. I don't know about you, but when somebody tells me I can't, it causes a different side to turn and rise up in you and says that. Who says I can't? <laughs> My wife and I was called into the ministry, back into the ministry, you might say in 1979, and I had an angelic visitation that, that rooted us up out of our businesses in Denver and shifted us to Phoenix, Arizona to begin to labor with Bishop and Mom Hammond, a trying, most trying time of our life, amen? And, uh, you know, because we was doing well in business, and, and ministry is nothing like business, and... <laughs> Oh, boy, did I have a lot to learn. <laughs> amen. But it was a challenge, amen, shifting from where we are to the place where God says, now this is where I want you to be. When you get in that moment of shift in your life, amen, you're going to have to wage a warfare and you're going to have to defy the work of the enemy, amen, so that you break through the gate, amen, that Father has already positioned for you, amen. And so his gates are awaiting you, amen, but all Opposition is trying to tell you, you can't do it. Amen. So everybody say, war at, war at your gate. Amen. Begin to literally battle and come against the powers of darkness and evil. We must do that as a corporate body this morning. And when I come in here Friday night and drove into the city on Thursday night, amen, we just drove by and, and, and the pastor says, now that's where we're building, you know, down over there. And I can see the shell of the building, you know, in a silhouette and the lighting, the sun setting. And, and, uh, but when I come into the building Friday night and I saw this picture up here, I thought, glory, hallelujah. There's a vision, there's a plan. But then the next thing that rolls up in me is that be alert and on guard. Because when you get a plan and you begin to work the plan, the devil will try to bring everything against you to try to oppose you and to keep you from fulfilling the plan. One of those things he'll try to do is delays. Everybody say delay. He'll try to bring delay after delay delay after delay. And if you can get things delayed enough and off sync enough, it can cost you almost double to do what you're trying to do. Is everybody with me? Yeah. Amen. So look at somebody say, be alert and on guard. Amen. Be alert and on guard. Don't let down your guard in this time of building. Amen. You are more vulnerable as a church right now than any time before. Why? Because this house has taken a step of faith to do something that the devil does not want to happen. I can assure you, I go from city to city, from Nashville to New York to Miami to all over the nation, and I can assure you, in cities, they do not want more churches. I, we've got churches in cities right now that they can't even get land. They won't even sell them land. Come on now. It's like it is shut down because you're a church or a kingdom church. They do not want to sell you land. And so we're breaking that stronghold. You're breaking that stronghold here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Amen. And God has us here for a purpose. Amen. So we're going through that gate. Don't let intimidation and humiliation and false accusation and depression and suppression. Amen. Manipulation. Don't let these things hinder you at your gate. Rise up and begin to wage the warfare against your enemies. Amen. Jane Hammond had a word. Amen. Man, I'm just giving this to you in a nutshell, but hers was, this is a new release. Everybody say a new release. New release. It has always been, but there's a new release, or you might say a Holy Spirit focus on the prophet's reward. Say the prophet's reward. The prophet's reward. Amen. And the prophet's reward is the miracle that money can't buy. Yeah. How many of you need miracles that money's not the issue? Yeah. Come on, though. I need miracles that money's not, money cannot buy you everything in life. <laughs> Come on now. As a matter of fact, it can only buy you monetary things and, and land and investment, but it can't buy you your health. It can't buy you your vision. It can't buy you your love. It can't buy you your family. It can't buy your future. It can't buy the hope, amen, and promise that you have in your heart. Amen. That's a, an act of God. 
Amen. And so, amen, we, she said this will be a new fresh release, amen, of the prophet's reward. And I want to decree that over this house this morning, amen, that there is bread that you have cast upon the waters. You say, what do you mean? There are offerings, there, are, there is giving, there are pledges, there are things that you have sown and forgot about. Come on now. You might have given a thousand, you might have given five hundred, a hundred, or fifty, or whatever, but you cast that seed at a moment of believing and then you forgot about it. Hallelujah. But according to the word of God, God does not forget it. Hallelujah. Say, He never forgets. <laughs> Amen. So the Bible says that your seed was cast upon the waters. Come on now. And after many days, now a day is, is a thousand years with God, so I don't know how many days are. But he said, after many days, it will come rolling back up on you on every way. And I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me, and he said, your seed has been out on the water, and it's been gaining interest. Come on. Come on. And so... You have seed out upon it. So it's time to begin to decree, amen, that prophet's reward, amen, and for that seed to come rolling back upon us at just the right time, amen. I want to decree, amen, that we're not going to carry a debt on this building, amen. We're not, going to, we're not going to be set back because we're making an investment. We're going to be built up. Come on now. Let me just share something with you. I was in a prayer meeting in our church. This has been some years ago, and as ministers, God has a way of teaching us a lesson. And so I had about 20 of our, of our saints and our elders in a prayer room, and we was praying before the service and uh, just decreeing the word of the Lord. And I knew that we needed to have especially $3,000 just that night. Amen. Now, not an offering. We needed three thousand dollars. Amen. For a situation that had come up in the in the city and in the church there, and I needed three thousand dollars before Monday morning above our tithes and our offerings. And so uh, I was get, I was I was beginning to pray for that, and I felt a shutdown in my spirit. Now, the shutdown was a Moses syndrome, and the Moses syndrome is is that you become more compassionate about the people than you are hearing the voice of the Father. Amen. So I begin to reminisce everyone in that circle and, and, and of, our, of our local church, you know, of their families, their jobs, the situations, the hard places, and all the difficulties, and everything that people are going through. And I surmised in myself that there's not $3,000 there. And it was like God just slapped me upside the head. You know, daddies will do that sometimes, just catch you off guard if you're not really listening. And God got my attention, and he said, don't you know that if you do not allow them to give that $3,000, you are robbing them of the thousands that I want to give them. Come on now. And, and so God corrected me, amen, and said that uh, tithes and offerings and giving is the business of God. Yeah. Amen. So we're to present to you, amen, and you are to fulfill, amen, the need of the kingdom. Amen. And so I believe that God is speaking to us and he's saying that this is the time I'm going to cause you to prosper uh, even double. Amen. Whatever you pledge, whatever you give, whatever you sow, you should be expecting double in return. Amen. So God spoke and he said, you're wanting 3,000, but I'm going to have to give them 9,000. <laughs> Come on now. Amen. So God always does. This is the season of the prophet's reward, a fresh release. Begin to decree it over your business before you walk through the door. Begin to decree it over your household, over your bank accounts. Begin to decree it over your children, the prodigals. Begin to uh, declare the word of the Lord. Everything that the enemy has tried to rob, steal, and kill, begin to decree it's all coming back. Look at somebody say, it's all coming back. Amen. So I believe that the Lord is speaking through me this morning, amen, to encourage you in an area of enlargement. Everybody say enlargement. Amen. And uh, I was not really aware that we was in a building program when I came. So, amen. So I had no idea of this. And I want to take you into Isaiah chapter 54, if you want to turn there in your Bibles with me. Amen. But I believe this is the time when God says, enlarge your borders. 
Say, enlarge my borders. <laughs> Amen. And he is saying, begin to uh, begin to defend, amen, or begin to protect or secure the borders that I'm giving you. Say, secure my borders. Amen. And then I heard him say, begin to rebuild your walls. Amen. Now, let me give a little clarity here. I want to address this word for everybody hearing me, whether online or whoever is listening this morning. Amen. God is not just speaking to the corporate church and just to life gate, but he is speaking to you as individual families. He is speaking to you as individual businesses. Come on now. And he says, this is a time of enlargement. I'm going to enlarge you personally. I'm going to enlarge you corporately. And I'm going to enlarge you as the kingdom. Amen. And so this is the time of expansion in Dallas, Texas. I hear the Lord saying, amen, that there's a fresh wave of the Holy Spirit that God wants to release. And there's a new sound of heaven. And I don't know for sure, uh, is Joshua still here? I don't know for sure how to do this, uh, apostles, but somehow I need to charge the worship team or anybody on the worship or anybody that should be and you're not, amen, or somebody that has an instrument and you've been hiding it, amen, just... Yeah. Anybody, you know, that should be a part, amen, just to release a charge to the worship because as we were singing this morning, I heard in my spirit, there's a new sound that Dallas has not heard yet. Come on now. There's a, there's a new decree that has not been released yet. Come on now. And there's, there's a new kingdom release that God wants to release over the city. I believe that God has us here as instruments of transformation and instruments of change. Amen? And so we're not here just to be a good church, even though we are here to be a good church, but not just a good church. We're here to be a powerful church. Say a powerful church. Amen? So we want to demonstrate all that God has given us in the book of Acts and more. Look at somebody say more. <laughs> God's going to bless us with more. So God says this is a time of expansion, a time of enlargement. So let's go into Isaiah chapter 54 for just a few moments. Amen. And he says, sing, O barren. Everybody say sing. Sing, sing O barren, you who have not born, and break forth into singing. Everybody say singing. singing. And cry out loud. Woo! Say out loud. out loud. Say God likes it loud. God likes it loud. <laughs> now we have a tendency to want to be silenced, and the enemy would like to silence your praise. He would like to silence your song. He would like to silence your decree. Come on now. He would like to cause a spirit of suppression. Amen. Which means uh, he would like to prevent you from making sounds that the airwaves do not want to hear. He would like to keep you from making a decree that. The, the, the people do not want to hear. He, he wants to keep you from writing something because they don't want to read your writing. <laughs> A spirit of suppression keeps you from being seen, from being heard, and from being reproduced. Can I just break a spirit of suppression? Amen. We, you know, for example, suppressors are in our sound system this morning. And they're actually keeping all the police signals out and all the sound. Everything that we don't want to hear, those suppressors are working to suppress all that sound. In the spirit realm, it works the same way. Spirits of suppression, amen, tries to block the sound from breaking through into heaven. And that's why the Bible speaks so much that when you sing, sing out loud, cry out loud, amen. God comes with a shout. He goes up with a shout, amen. And that victory shout that breaks us through through into a whole new dimension of his glory. Amen. So he said, sing, O barren. Amen. Those who have not born yet. I want to address this to every business person in this room right now and those that are listening to us. Amen. This is a new season for your business. And God says, I want to take your business to a brand new level. And in addition to that, I don't want you just to do one thing. I want you to do multiple things. Come on, and I will begin to multiply you. And I will begin to expand you. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, listen, if you are not careful, you can come into, you know, a place where, you know, God, I just want to make enough and do enough just to be comfortable and to get by and just to enjoy life. And, and you know what? Uh, you can really prosper and do the same thing. <laughs> and you can enjoy life even the more. 
Come on now, but if you aren't careful, you'll come in agreement with silence or being non-productive and not fulfilling all that God has purposed for you to do. Come on. And I want to stir up a vision in you. Why? Because the Bible says without a vision, without a purpose, without a destiny, people perish, become ineffective, or they fall by the wayside. Look at somebody say, you're going to be very effective. Kyle, whatever it takes, amen, to begin to jolt you, to shake you, to shift you, amen, to that next place that God has for you that, you, that you cannot be silent. So he said, all of you that are barren, he said, begin to sing and sing out loud. Yes. Come on, I believe that song and worship is one of our greatest weapons of warfare in this season. Come on, intercessors, when you get together, begin to sing, begin to release a song. Why, why is a song so important? Come on now. The song is so important because the song at one time belonged to Lucifer. The Bible says that Lucifer was the epitome of worship and beauty in heaven. He had all the authority, he had all the control, and he was the operator of the worshipers of heaven. Come on now. You need to understand that the first church split wasn't on earth, it was in heaven. Come on now. In Revelation chapter 12, the Bible says that, that Lucifer was trying to compare himself to God. Come on now. And a spirit of pride began to enter into Lucifer and a third of the angels of heaven. That's why we work with our worship leaders to pray extra for them, to pray for those that, that praise and worship because there's a bitterness or a hatred of Lucifer, why, of jealousy, because they're doing what he was doing. Come on, that's why, that's why there's always an opposition or sometimes they can feel a wall like they just can't quite break through. Come on, because the Lucifer does not want you to be activated in song and worship. Come on now. But the Bible says that the battle got so severe in heaven, amen, that God entered into battle with the angels of heaven and he decreed over Lucifer, amen, that there's no more room for you here. <laughs> Can I decree over a life gate? There is no more room for Lucifer. Come on now. Woo! <laughs> And the Bible says that God literally stripped him. Say stripping. He took away every, all the beauty. He took away all the anointing. He took away all the gifting. He took away all the honor. And he literally stripped him of everything that made him popular. And he was cast out of heaven to earth. Do you realize that earth become Lucifer's hell? You know, some people think the devil can follow you all day long and just torment you. But you know that is not true. One, the devil is not omniscient. He's not omnipresent. Come on. The devil is not a god. He's a fallen angel. Come on. His authority has already been stripped from him. Come on now. But principalities and powers in that second heaven try to create an atmosphere because of the anger, amen, of everything that Lucifer lost. The Bible said when Lucifer was cast out, a third of the angels of heaven was cast out with him. Come on now. And the devil is so angry. Revelation chapter 8 says the devil is so angry because he knows that he only has a little time left. Come on now. Come on. So Lucifer was cast to earth not to be your tormentor, but to be tormented by you. Come on now. Every time you sing, every time you strum the guitar, every time you beat the drum, every time you set your feet to dancing, every time you move your body, every time you release your voice, every time you activate praise and worship, you are tormenting the enemy. You are the devil's tormentor. Come on, we need a divine reversal. You're not to be tormented by the enemy. Come on now. There's a spirit of warfare upon this house, and there's a sound in Dallas Fort Worth that has not been heard yet, and I believe it's going to come from Life Gate. Woo! Look at somebody and say, why not? Why shouldn't it be here? Why shouldn't it be now? Why shouldn't it be us? 
You know, I believe those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, that they are filled. You know, as I was speaking Friday night, I believe that the devil would like to keep you so involved in personal problems. Sickness, emotional, financial, family, discontentment, sadness, weariness, confusion. I, I believe he would just like to just bombard you with things that keep you from activating your faith. Come on now. If the enemy could keep us so centralized upon ourselves, then we don't have time to think about the kingdom. We're just surviving and hope we make it till he comes. Look at somebody and say, I'm not just a survivor. Come on, we need to dive into the presence of the Lord. We need to dive into the power and manifestation of His Holy Spirit. We need to be a lively church, a powerful church. Come on now, one that destroys principalities and powers. When the Lord shifted us and moved us, my wife and I and my family, from the beaches of Florida to the fields of Indiana. <laughs> I knew I had to hear God because I'm, you know, I'm moving into an area of a population of 4,500 people, and I'm supposed to build something, and you need people to build, and there are none. I'm telling you, God has a sense of humor. God, God will get you in a place where it can't be you, and it has to be him. Come on now. Some of you are, the, some of you are there right now. Amen. But when the Father moved us up to, to Indiana, it looked like a place of impossibility. Come on. But God said, I'm going to bring transformation here, and I'm going to bring change here, and I'm going to use you as the instruments of change. Look at somebody say, you're an instrument of change. Come on, I, I pray that you don't just get a mentality of surviving and just getting by. We used to sing a song, Joshua, that was written by uh, Prophet Psalmist Robert Gay many, many years ago. And it was basically, we're not just holding on. No, we're possessing. <laughs> we're not just getting by. Now we're taking over. <laughs> Ag aggressive in the spirit. Come on now. And I believe that as LifeGate, we're going to have to get aggressive, aggressive in your song. Business people, when you get to your job, don't wait till Sunday to worship. Worship at your work. Come on, husband and wives, don't wait till you get to church to worship. Worship at home. You know, come to church ready to worship. Wouldn't it be awesome if everybody came through the door worshiping and singing and the worship leaders had to catch up with the congregation? <laughs> I had that happen to me one time. We was doing a conference, and uh, we had at least 600 people present, and our building was packed out, and, and uh, I was running about three, five minutes late, and the worship team had been on the platform, and they were just trying to practice a couple notes, and everybody else thought it was worship, and they just all took off. <laughs> the worship leader's like, we haven't started yet. I come in, I said, yeah, we're started. <laughs> Come on now. You should be worship in the making, worship ready to happen. Why? Because praise and worship is going to be our greatest weapon of warfare. Come on. You understand what I'm doing this morning? I'm breaking the spirit of barrenness off of you. And God said, this is the time that you're going to prosper. This is the time your vision is going to break through. This is the time I'm going to expand you. This is the time your dream is going to come into focus. This is the time when all things are possible. This is the time your faith is going to be activated. And I'm breaking the spirit of barrenness off of your dream, your home, your business, your church, your city. Come on now. It's a new day. All things are passed away and all things become new. So sing, oh barren. He didn't say pray. <laughs> he didn't say dance, go jogging. You know, he didn't say, say visitation. He didn't say have a potluck dinner. He said sing. Why is it when we have an opportunity to sing, 
that people just clam up. That your voice gets silent. Your voice gets quiet. Your hands go in your pocket. Because that's the flesh. The flesh does not want to worship. But your spirit wants to worship God. And if we surrender our flesh to our spirit, come on, it'll set your feet to dancing, your hands to clapping. Come on, God will just cause you to receive that worship. Well, I remember when I was in a place of bondage as a businessman, and it just seemed like when I went to church and whenever I was in that presence, it was like, you know, I have another obligation here, you know, be a businessman. <laughs> It stinks. That's what it does. You know, because it, it just brings a, it brings a bondage about you. Business people, you should be some of the most radical worshipers in the church. Why? Because you need supernatural breakthroughs, taking back the kingdoms of this world. Come on now. According to Revelation chapter 12, taking back the kingdoms of this world, that they become the kingdoms of our Lord and His Christ. Come on now. I'm just speaking over LifeGate this morning, and God said this is a time of enlargement. It's a time of expansion, and I'm breaking the spirit of barrenness off of you. Come on now. And I'm bringing you to a new season and a place where you have not been before. So sing, O barren. Sing, LifeGate. <laughs> you who have not born yet, break forth into singing. If you've not produced the dream in you, begin to sing louder. Wow. Sing harder. <laughs> you know, there was a time in my life when I really did serve life and what I was doing in life and tried to make life as good as you could make life. But when I come into the kingdom, now this would be my second go around. I was born you know, with a purpose and destiny. Then I was trained in ministry. And then I went through years of preparation in my dark years or my dark ages. Then I had a Holy Spirit visitation of angels give me an ultimatum of life or death. Oh, <laughs> please, I was smart enough to say, I want to live and not die. <laughs> Come on. And when I came into the church, my second go around, 1979, and when I came into church, 1979, it was like my, my flesh, you know, did not want to worship. My flesh did not want to break out of an old mold or an old syndrome. And I, I become a workaholic in those years, and I was hidden away from God, and, and I mean, just that, I, I was angry at church, I was angry at people, I was angry at God, I was like, just let me hide. <laughs> let, let me hide and make money, and let me build, and let me, that's what we did. And, uh, but you know, when I come into the kingdom the second time around, something shifted on the inside of me. Come on now. And God said, I'm going to bring you all the way out of your hiding. Yeah, I'm speaking to somebody this morning. And God says, I'm going to bring you all the way out of your hiding. And you're going to begin to abide with me on a higher level. And you're going to know the glory, the favor, the promise, the power, and the magnificence of God more than you have ever known in your life. Look at somebody say, it's a new day. It's a whole new day. This couple sitting right here, brother, yeah. Rubbing your jaw right there. <laughs> Beautiful wife beside you. Amen. Y'all stand with me. Just, amen. We're recording in the back, right? Amen. You can give them your, your, you can record on your phone, son, if you know how to find it. Amen. <laughs> You're welcome to use your phones. If you know, this is the only time you get approval. To, just like you can covet to record right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, What's your first names? Dave and Arlene. Dave and Arlene. Dave and Arlene. Dave and Arlene. Yeah. D and R. All right. Doctors. All right. Uh, I just charge you in the name of the Lord. And God says, son and daughter, I just shifted your atmosphere. 
when you leave this building, your life is not the same. And God said, I've released angels on assignment. And the Lord said, everything that the devil tried to devastate you with, I am shifting it. And I'm going to cause it all for glory in your life and my kingdom, says the Lord. And when Jesus prayed in John 17, and he said, Father, bring me back to the glory that I had with you before the world was. The Lord says, son and daughter, there's a glory that you have with me that you have not entered into yet. And I'm lighting a new fire on the inside of you, says the Lord. And the Lord said, son, I want you to get more adamant. I want you to adopt a more warfare, says the Lord. And God said, I want you to get more aggressive. Uh, and God says, begin to flex your spiritual muscles, says the Lord. And God said, get your word in alignment, get your faith in alignment, and get your decree in alignment. For the Lord says, you're going to break the strongholds of the enemy. You're going to break generational curses, says the Lord. You're going to begin to release and decree uh, supernatural blessings of heaven upon yourself, upon your wife, upon your household, upon your family, upon your finances. And the Lord says, daughter, I want you to dream bigger. But the Lord says, the flesh would say, just dream this much because I don't want to put too much pressure. I don't want to over, I don't want to overburden. I don't, and the Lord says, no, no, apply the pressure, says the Lord. God said, dream and dream big, says the Lord, for I am a big God and I'm breaking every spirit of limitation uh, that would try to keep you from getting to the manifestation and the place that I have called you to, says the Lord. And God says, son, I'm going to put a brand new vision, a brand new dream within you, says the Lord. As I'm praying for you, you are very special people. I've never met you in my life, but I hear God say you are special to the Father, and God said he, this is the time that he's going to give attention, and it's not that he's ignored you. He has just been waiting for you. And in 1979, I put my fist out my window, and I said, God, remember what I told you 10 years ago, and God let me lay there 10 years waiting for me to respond. God's been waiting for your response, and brother, you've been responding in your spirit, and heaven says, I, heaven has heard your cry, says the Lord. And God said, this is the time I want you to activate your faith to a brand new level, says the Lord. And God said, I have new spheres, and I have new opportunities, and I have new doors of breakthrough for you, says the Lord. And God said, what the enemy is wrongfully taken from you is going to come back to you in a manifold way, says the Lord. I just minister a word of healing uh, says, in your body. And God said, you're going to be strong, you're going to be healthy, you're going to be able, you're going to be stable, you're going to be capable to do all that you put your hands to, says the Lord. Father, I defy the work of the enemy right now, and I decree life and that more abundantly, Lord, upon them. By the power of your love, in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Thank you, Father. God is good. Give the Lord a praise. Look at somebody say, God is so good. <laughs> amen. A young man back on the sound booth back there. I think you was here Friday night. I'm not sure. I saw you Friday night, but there was something, brother, about your smile that caught my attention. <laughs> and it's not just your smile. It's your spirit. Yes. See, there's something. You only, you only smile because of something that is in you. And the Lord said, I have gifted you, I have called you. And the Lord said, this is the time that I'm going to begin to provoke you. In other words, God's going to push you out of your comfort zones. It's kind of like the eaglets. You know, they'll be in a nest for so long. And if they don't get up and move out of their nest, the mama eagle, will she'll put thorns in the nest. And she's going to make the nest so uncomfortable that that little eaglet's got to get out of that nest. I hear God say, I'm going to mess with your nest, says the Lord. And and God said, this is the time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you out of your comfort zone. Brother, there's anointing on you. There's favor upon you. There's business within you. And God said, there's prosperity in you. And God said, there's advancement. There's leadership, says the Lord. And God said, I don't want you just to settle for the norm, but I want you to begin to storm the gates of hell and begin to take your blessing, says the Lord. And God said, son, there's an inheritance that's been laid up for you. And I hear the word robbery, and it's like the enemy has tried to rob rob you and you didn't even know it but God says I'm alarming you today begin to wage war over a spirit of robbery and God said your inheritance won't be messed with and God said that which I've established you for will not be robbed from you says the Lord and you're not going to be demoted on your job but you're going to be promoted says the Lord and God said you're always going to have higher levels and next level says the Lord I hear God say I've not only called you to lead in the marketplace but I've called you to lead in my kingdom says the Lord 
and so brother begin to mentor others to do the thing you should have at least three or four people that you're mentoring all the time and training people what you do and the Lord said more time in the word more time in prayer more time in counsel says the Lord and I want you to get a 10 year plan says the Lord and God said I want you to see the advancement the promotion the favor I want you to see the grace of God that is upon your life says the Lord so expand your borders expand your tent stakes says the Lord expand your vision expand your dream ignite a fire on the inside of you refuse to be the norm says the Lord and God said be one that storms the gates of hell father I charge this young man by the power of your word right now God life in him oh father God that begins to take him to begin to soar to that brand new level in Jesus name we pray somebody said amen amen, amen. praise the Lord look at somebody say God is so good Amen. So sing, O barren, you have not born yet. Break forth into singing. Cry out loud, you have not labored with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Look at somebody and say, you are not alone. Uh, more more are, the, are those that have not born yet, that have a vision, that have a dream in them. Come on now. And if you're not careful, you will begin to look at, at, at business competition. You'll begin to look at other saints. You'll begin to look at your neighbor, your brother, your sister. You'll begin to look at other people prospering. And you're saying, God, why not me? Come on now. Yeah, you know, there are people that live next door to you. Come on out, that spit at the name of God. They, they don't go to church. They don't give in church. They don't, they don't care about church. And yet they're driving beamies and you're driving Chevys. Come on and say, God, what's wrong with this picture? Come on, I love you with all my heart. I pay my tithes. I go to church. I love people and I work through issues and I watch my language. And, blah, blah, blah. and God, here they are prospering. Here is a guy. I'm getting nothing. The Bible says don't look at them because the day is coming when that is all going to be cut low as the grass of the field, according to prophet Isaiah. Come on now. And all that's in the hands of the wicked, all that's in the hands of the unrighteous, it will be taken away and it will be given to the righteous. Look at somebody and say, your blessing is coming. Come on, there's an inheritance. You, you don't have time, church, to murmur and complain and worry about what somebody else has got. As a matter of fact, begin to bless what somebody else has. When the Lord first moved us to Versailles, we had to get a vision. And I'm telling you, I'm looking at 50 acres of land surrounded by State Park in an unpopulated city. And I'm supposed to get a vision. Come on now. And I'm driving through that town and just nothing there. So I just begin to prophesy, you know, to the ugly businesses and the the things that was there. It looked like a city of poverty. It was awful. Come on. Yeah, and, but we've broken the curse over that city. Now McDonald's is there. Hallelujah. Yeah. Subway's there now. Huh? Pizza Hut. Woo, all that stuff's not good for you. Anyway. But the Lord gave me a vision, a plan on that acreage, and, and one of the things that God showed me was a, a, a recreation center that would minister to the community, it would minister to the city, and, and it would minister to the kingdom, and, and it would be a beautiful facility. We have it all drawn out. We have it all planned out, and I pray, and I have the intercessors pray, and we're waging war over that, and then it comes out in the newspaper, the Baptist Church, <laughs> eight minutes from us to the west are building a new life center. And I'm like, God, that's mine. <laughs> I must be praying wrong. God said, no, you're not praying wrong. Keep praying. So I prayed harder. I got the intercessors waging war. I mean, for another year. It comes out in the paper, the Baptist church, all the way to the east, 10 minutes the other way, building a new recreation center. It's all going backwards. God said, I'm trying to teach you an apostolic principle. That if you're doing what you're supposed to do, everything around you will begin to prosper. 
He said, don't complain about what others are prospering in because your day is coming. Come on now. And I have a perfect timing for your breakthrough and your barrenness will be broken and you will give a birth to the vision and the dream that I'm giving. I don't know who I'm speaking to right now, but there's some of you out here this morning. Come on. You've been looking at what's happening around you and thinking that you have lost. No, you are being set up to win. Come on now and keep the faith and keep your vision and keep your focus and stay Stay on track. Look at somebody say, stay on track. Is this your husband? Whoa. Why don't you two stand together? We ministered to you yesterday, I know, but I just saw like the light of heaven shining upon you. And the Lord said, the two of you are entering into a brand new season. And son, I'm igniting a fire in you. And I hear an unstoppable anointing, an unstoppable love of God, an unstoppable faith, and an unstoppable breakthrough. And the Lord said, son, you're going to touch your children and your children's children, says the Lord. And God said, this is your season, that there's going to be a greater manifestation of miracle signs and wonders, says the Lord. And God said, I'm activating that teacher in you. I'm activating that father in you. I'm activating that anointing in you. God says that is going to shift you in this season. And I hear the Lord say to tell you, new favor is being opened up unto you, says the Lord. And God said, this will be a time of promotion. But God said, decree it, believe it, stand firm and stand sure in the faith, says the Lord. And you'll know my grace like you have never known. And you can be fully assured, my brother, that the word of the Lord and the presence of Jehovah God, the presence of Yahweh, he is going before you in this season, says the Lord. And God said, I'm setting a supernatural order. God has a plan that he's not even shared with you yet. And God said, you thought you were just doing time and you've been doing fine. But God said, there's a bigger plan. There's a bigger vision, says the Lord. I don't want you to chill. I don't want you to level out, but I want you to ignite a new fire in your face, says the Lord. And God said, be bold and decree a thing and believe it and you will see it, says the Lord. <laughs> you say, why do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> just something gets in you, you know, and you just, you just got, is this a family sitting right here? What? With this sister right there on that roll where I see a, da- a girl there and a young man there. Pardon? My daughter and my son. Can I have you stand as a family? Everybody stretch your hand over to them. Uh, yeah, the, uh, you know their name back there? Yes. Oh, good. Now, I don't You got their name. God's got your name. <laughs> it doesn't matter what name they got. You got a new name written in glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I just looked at you, and God said to tell you, God said, the wait is over. And it was just like Elijah on the mountain. Come on now, when he was praying to break the to break the drought, and he was praying for a rain to be released upon the land. God said, "I'm breaking your drought," says the Lord. And God said, "There's a faith in you that you didn't know you had," says the Lord. And God said, "Don't view your tomorrow based on yesterday. It's a brand new day. Old things have passed away, and all things have become new." And for your daughter, I hear the Lord say, "I'm anointing your feet for dancing. I'm anointing your heart for." rejoicing and I'm going to fulfill a dream and a purpose in you and the Lord says don't you believe the lie of the enemy and God said you're not second best you're not second choice God said you're the cream of the crop and the best that I've got says the Lord and I want you to I want you to increase the Lord said the vision that you have for yourself listen you're going to go to school your education is going to be paid for you're not just going to go to college you're going to go to uni says the Lord and you're going to go on and God said you're going to complete your degree program and you're going to be a woman of of high influence in the church, in the marketplace, says the Lord. And God said, you're going to be not only a beautiful daughter, but an excellent wife. You're going to be a beautiful mother, says the Lord. And God said, I have a dream. But guess what? The enemy will try to compare some things to the dream of God, and it's not going to match up, says the Lord. And God said, you keep your eyes focused on me. I have something very special for you, says the Lord. Amen. For your son, I hear the Lord say, son, I am lighting a fire on the inside of you, and you're going to be a man of vision, a man of 
purpose and a man of destiny. You are highly gifted and highly skilled. And guess what? You have not ventured into the things of faith yet, says the Lord. But God said, I want you to begin to stretch your faith. Even on the stringed instrument, says the Lord. And God said, even in the song, says the Father. And God said, send your anointed uh, like a Daniel in the marketplace. There's a spirit of excellence upon you, my brother. And God said, quit comparing yourself to other young men. And God said, you are a standalone, says the Lord. And God said, I'm equipping you in this season for such a time as it. And I hear God telling you, find ways to serve in the church. Because as you serve in the church, so will you serve in the city, says the Lord. And God said, what you do in the city will be a replica of what you do in the church. Lord, I charge them as a family right now. God, this is a time of breakthrough. And God, as I minister to them, every family in this church, God, it will be a new season of breakthrough. Every seed they've sown, all faith that they've activated, everything that they've given of themselves, God, now begin to reward them, oh God, with a hundredfold blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody say, God is so good. God is so good. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Verse 2. Are you ready? <laughs> enlarge. Everybody say enlarge. enlarge. Everything in the natural will tell you that you cannot do what God says for, him, for you to do. Come on. I'm here to decree to this house this morning, this is a new season of enlargement. It's a new season of expansion. Uh, it's a new season of breakthrough. It's a new season, come on now, of honor, reward, and return coming back to you. Enlarge the place of your tent. Let me help you here. That is not speaking about just this building program. It's not speaking about your house. It is speaking about this tent. It is speaking about this kingdom of God that is in you. It is speaking about this spiritual house. Yeah. Say, I'm a spiritual house. I'm a spiritual house. And the Bible says that this house belongs to God. Yes. You are not your own. You are bought with a price. But it's amazing how we keep trying to take control of what is God's. How we try to rule what belongs to the Father. Come on. Enlarge the place of this tent. And let life gates stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. And do not spare. Look at somebody and say, do not spare. Do not spare. And I, I want to break a spirit of limitation, come on now, that will cause you to think small. Yes. Yes. Look at somebody and say, break out. break out. Now, I'm not a prosperity teacher, even though when you teach the kingdom and the word of God, you're teaching prosperity. Yes. Come on now. But I do know that limitation will keep you from a dream. It'll keep you from a vision. It'll keep you from a hope. It'll keep you from expansion. And it will keep you in the place that you're in. Come on now. As long as you just be silent and do what you do. Look at somebody say, break out. I was in Nashville, Tennessee. And doing a conference there. And I called a gentleman out sitting at the back of the building. Couldn't really see the man. All I could see was a silhouette. See, just like, but I could see a light just of the kingdom over top of him. And so I called the man out. And normally I don't have everybody come to the front for time's sake. It'll take me 30, 45 minutes more if everybody came to the front. Verse says, being able to minister to where you stand. Look at somebody say, God's able. God's able. And so there's no distance in the realm of the spirit. So, but he moved out of his chair and came down to the front. And that was okay too. And uh, he came down and he stood at the altar. Now, when you prophesy, and I've prophesied over tens of thousands, and Bishop Hammond has prophesied over, well, beyond number. And, but when you prophesy, you don't remember everything you say. I can assure you we are not that smart. I keep going back to my notes for Pete's sake. We are not that smart. We don't remember everything. But yet people will still come up to me and say, you know, you prophesied to me 25 years ago. I was listening to that tape on my way to church this morning. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> you remember when you said, I said, absolutely. <laughs> 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 
We don't remember everything we say. But on the other hand, if we say something that we have never said, it's a paradigm. It's like you know you've never said that. And the Holy Spirit spoke something to that gentleman that I had never heard come out of my mouth. 1 Peter chapter 5 says, Pray for your brothers and sisters throughout the whole earth because they all experience the same thing that you do. So you may hear the same thing over and over because people experience the same things. But when you say something different, you know it. And I heard the Lord speak to that man, and he said, I don't want you to judge your ability and what you can do based on your age. He looked older than me. <laughs> and the Lord said, because your age will talk to you, and your age will dictate to you what you can do, when you can do, if you can do, how long you can do, and if you're able to do. And then the Lord told him, I don't want you to plan your ability to, to, your ability to expand and to go and to come and to be active and to be powerful in my kingdom based on your physical condition. <laughs> because your body will talk to you and your body will say you can't bend, you can't move, you can't twist, you can't swivel, you can't walk. Oh, Anybody been there? Yeah, come on, your, your body will talk to you and it will dictate to you what you can do. And the Lord spoke to him and said, I don't want you to plan what you can give, what you can sow. I don't want you to plan out of your social security, out of your, out of your income, or out of the savings in your bank account. Come on now. He said, because your money will talk to you and your money will tell you how you can live. <laughs> come on. And I heard the Lord tell him, I don't live there. Come on, Isaiah 55, his thoughts and his ways are much higher than our ways. Come on now. And we can get stuck in the place that we're in, and it becomes a limitation in your life. Come on, and you will do, be, plan, dream, everything based on familiarity. Yeah. 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 Can I break a spirit of familiarity? Yeah. Yeah. Now, because in a spirit of familiarity, you get very comfortable where you're at, and you feel safe with where you're at, but you never grow from wilderness to Canaan. Come on, yeah. Come on now. How many really want to break out? Come on now. Kyle, we want to break into the fullness of the promises of God. We don't want to live in just the land of enough. We want to live in the land of more than enough. Amen. Say more than enough. More than Amen. Enough. So let's lay your hands on your heart right now in Jesus' name. Father, I come against spirits of limitation and familiarity. God, that would cause us to think according to our possibility rather than thinking in faith of what you said, all things are possible to those that believe. God, activate that believing faith in them right now. Oh, God, that will shift them out of the place that they're in. Oh, God, into the place of faith that you call them to walk in. Oh, God, that the favor of God, double favor, double honor, double blessing uh, will rest upon LifeGate and will rest upon these businesses uh, and will rest upon these people, God. Lord, because without faith, it's impossible to, to please you. But God, fill them full of God faith right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a praise offering. Come on, just, just receive that word. Just receive that word. But a spirit of limitation will be a dictation and it will dictate to you how you can live. I was in a church in Indianapolis in I normally minister Friday, Saturday, Sunday, travel Thursday, travel Monday. And, uh, and so he said, Apostle Leon, we don't have a service Saturday. And I thought, ah, <laughs> hallelujah, <laughs> a free day. <laughs> I don't get that many. And so he said, and we're going to go look at cars. And I'm like, look at cars? I love to look at cars. The only new cars I see are driving down the highways. Or they show you just a clip of them on television. But you don't really get to sit in them and look at a new car. Am I the only one that likes new cars? Okay. And 
my mind immediately, and I'm telling you this for a purpose, my mind immediately went to, you know, the, the new Impala or the Cadillac or the, you know, the, you know the, the new Nissan, whatever they call it. And the, it, it just went to some cars like that. And he said, oh, no, 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 no. No, he said, there's a strip here. He said, where they start with Audis and then BMWs and Mercedes and, you know, Rolls Royce and, and Bentleys. And they got all the upper, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to go look at cars that there's no way in the natural that I can afford to look at that kind of car. I'd like to at least look within possibility. Everybody say limitation. You grow in your spirit of limitation. And even if you're going to do a new thing, guess what? You're going to calculate your ability before your faith. Come on now. And I'm sharing this with you for a purpose. Because God is speaking to us as a house, as life gate. He says, I'm going to break you through to a level like you have never been on. Come on. People are going to come to this church not only just to find Jesus, but because it's a church that is prospering in Jesus. And that Jesus is not only the giver of life. Come on. He, he brings you life in itself. Come on now. And they want, to, they want to be a part of something that is succeeding. Look at somebody say, you're going to succeed. And so... You know, my, but my limitation was, was my affordability. And so we started looking at Audis, and they were nice, and the BMWs, and they were really nice. And, you know, they say, hey, just point it, and it'll get there. Hallelujah. Just, and then we went into a Mercedes, and I've never really liked Mercedes, but, you know, but we're looking at all these cars. And, and so we went in the showroom floor, Joshua, and there was a brand-new 350 S-Series Mercedes jet black, 310 interior. I mean, a beautiful car. Big back door on it, like a limo almost. You say, I wouldn't want that, but I do. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I, I got knee replacements and all of that, and it's hard to get your... You know, you hit your feet on the doors and on the runner boards and all. It's just hard to get in and out of cars. <laughs> But it had this nice big door. I mean, you could just sit down and slide in. <laughs> I'm looking at that car and the trunk. My gosh, my wife and I, we could get our luggage and Mickey and Sandy's in there. This is all big. <laughs> I'm just looking at it, and then the sales lady comes over, and she said, you like that car? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, do I like that car. <laughs> Jesus, this is a nice car. <laughs> and I told her, yeah, it's a car. You know, we're looking at cars today. I'm not telling her what I'm really thinking. <laughs> and she said, would you like to drive that car? And I'm like, yes, sir. oh, my God. <laughs> I can't even get the Chevrolet dealer to let me drive it without three people riding with me for peace sake. And give him my birth certificate and my credit card and... She said, you can drive that car right now if you'd like to drive it. I said, well, we can check it out. <laughs> Pull that car right off the showroom floor, Joshua. And I mean, we, we got out into the parking lot. She said, now let me show you a few things that work on this car. She said, if you'll hit that button right there. I said, so I hit that, and my seat began to move. And the whole bottom began to slide forward. Remember, I have knee replacements. Come on up. Oh, that thing come right out under my, right at the back of my knee, and it was just perfect. I thought, well, isn't this nice? She said, hit that button, and it started vibrate. I said, oh, my God, I'm 74 years old. Oh, that feels good. She said, hit that button. I hit another, and it was like fingers popped up in the seat, like the, all the way down your legs, up your back, and all the way back down. And, and I was like, oh, God, is this legal? <laughs> she, says, she says, we're going to get you out on the interstate. So we went out on the interstate. And she said, do you like power? I said, I love power. She says, put the pedal to the metal. And, said, and I did, you know, over 428 horsepower. I mean, it jumped like a horse out of a stall. Glory to God. Wow! 
And then she says, now take your hand off the steering wheel. No! <laughs> she said, yeah, it'll drive itself. It'll stay in lane. It'll stop. It'll slow down. It'll speed up. It'll, yeah, you can take your hands off and just relax with the pedal of the metal. I said, no. <laughs> It had a navigation in the dashboard that was like a big screen TV. Hallelujah. Covered half the dashboard. <laughs> I'm used to the little five by seven, you know. <laughs> we got pulled back into the parking lot. And uh, she says, how'd you like to buy that car? <laughs> I said, ah, how much you take for it? <laughs> she said, today we'll take 120000 I said, 120 <laughs> I reached up and scratched my chin. And, uh, but when she said that, I saw a tinker tape. You know, that, you know what a tinker tape is? It's something where you see a writing. I saw a writing, and it said, Donna. That's my wife. I saw a tinker that said, Donna. What would Donna think? If I came home and I just bought a $120,000 Mercedes and we hadn't talked about it yet, it was she wouldn't talk to begin with because her limit was even more than mine. She said, can I sign you up? I said, eh, not right now. We're going down to look at a Bentley. We want to look at the Bentleys first. <laughs> But I heard the Lord speak to me, and he said, I'm trying to show you that you can break out of your limited thinking. Maybe you don't want a Mercedes. Maybe you don't want a BMW. Maybe you don't want this or that. Come on. But you have the right to think outside of your limitation. Come on. And sometimes God will position you and he'll stretch you to, to just begin to break out. That's what I see happening with this house. Come on. God said, I'm breaking the limitations off of you. Come on now. And you're going to expand your borders to the right and to the left. Come on now. And I'm going to enlarge you in this season. Listen, when God enlarges a ministry, he enlarges the people because the church can't enlarge unless the people are enlarged. I'm speaking to your enlargement this morning. I'm speaking to your faith this morning. I'm speaking to a new day of breakthrough for you. Now, my brother and sister sitting right over here to my right. Yeah, looking at me right there. I think he was, I wonder, was you playing drums or? All right, can I pray for you too? You got a baby, just sit there. Amen. Amen. What, what's your first names? Just one person. Danny and Marcy, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Danny and Marcy, I've been looking over at you, and, and I just see a cloud of the presence of God about you guys. And the Lord says, son and daughter, I am working all things together for your good, says the Lord. And even though it doesn't all feel good in this season, I'm working it all together for your good, says the Lord. And God said, I do want you to break out of any limitations, says the Lord. Now, God wants you to use common sense. He wants you to use wisdom. He wants you to have counsel, but God said, I don't want you to be limited by impossibilities. I want you to be challenged by them, says the Lord. And the Lord said, son, there's an entrepreneur anointing upon you and you're anointed for business and like a Joseph of old, says the Lord. God said, I'll put wealth in your hand and I'll put a commanding anointing upon you, says the Lord, and I will position you to be at the right place at the right time. And God said, I want you to begin to dream about the dream that I put in your heart, says the Lord. And God said, test and prove all things. In the mouths of two or three witnesses. Let everything be established, says the Lord. And God said, settle it in your heart and spirit. Uh, I've called you to be a leader and not just a follower, says the Lord. And the Lord says, daughter, you're more than what you thought you were, and you can do more than you thought you could do. And God says, daughter, you're high on the Richter scale of heaven, says the Lord. And listen, the Bible says that it is the anointing of God that breaks the yokes of bondage. And God said, there's an anointing on you to break the yokes of bondage, says the Lord. And God said the enemy tried to bring a 
spirit of rejection, even in your youth, says the Lord. God said to make you feel secondary rather than primary. But God says, no, you're the cream of the crop and the best that I've got, says the Lord. And God says, daughter, lift your sights higher. For God said, I'm going to bless you. And God said, the prayers that you have prayed, heaven has heard, says the Lord. And God said, heaven is going to respond, God said, even to your faith. And God's given you the gift of faith, even to speak to mountains and they'll be removed, says the Lord. And the Lord said, son, new contacts and new opportunity. And I hear God say, measure your steps because everything that God opens, the enemy will try to establish a counterfeit, says the Lord. And God said, but I'm giving you that discernment and listen to your wife because her discernment is probably double yours, says the Lord. And God <laughs> said, she'll discern. That is not right. That is not right. And God said, begin to listen to what she has to say, says the Lord. And the Lord says, daughter, I've given you a good man, says the Lord. And God said, you're going to be well established. I just see there's going to be an opportunity uh, even of investment that God is going to open up to you. And God said, it's going to bless you. It's going to prosper you. I'm going to give you an entry. And God says, when you get into the entry, then I'm going to multiply it. And it's going to shock you, says the Lord. It's like you make a $200,000 investment and all of a sudden it's worth $500,000. God says, watch me work a miracle. God said, all things are possible to those that believe, says the Lord. And God said, I'll bless your children and your children's children, and my anointing rests upon your brother. There's a heritage in your own family, and God says that this is a time to activate that heritage, says the Lord. It's like I see a mantle of an apostolic anointing, and I don't know if you understand apostolic or not. It, it's a, according to the scriptures, it's miracles, signs and wonders, it's teaching, it's fathering, it's foundation, it's building, it's order, uh, it's setting order, it's sending, uh, and God said it, it, it's multiplying, caring about other people and not just yourself. That's the type of gifting that's upon your life, says the Lord. And God said, you're going to prosper because of the apostolic anointing upon your life, says the Lord. So God said, this is a new day, son and daughter. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. And God said, join your heart and spirit together and begin to decree a thing and believe it in your heart and your eyes will see it and your heart will experience it, says the Lord. Father, charge them and bless them by the power of your love right now in Jesus' name. A little sister sitting right, by, right there in the black. Yeah, what's your name, hon, real quick? Real quick. Your, your name right here with the black and white. Mm -hmm. Oh, Kathy. Kathy. Kathy, I just heard the Lord say, it's all going to be okay. God's got it all in order. And the things that look out of order, God said, I'm releasing angels on assignment. God has heard your cry. And God says, daughter, things are not going to remain the way they are. And God said, you're not just going to go from day to day, month to month, year to year of impossibility. God says, daughter, this is your time to break through. And I want you, there's a warrior on the inside of you. And God said, begin to war. But listen, the enemy's been trying to attack your faith. He's tried to attack you physically. He's tried to attack you financially. He's tried to attack you emotionally. He said, if I can't get this way, I'll get her that way. And God said, he's not been able to get you anyway. And God said, you've just been experiencing the storm like Job. But God said, enough is enough, says the Lord. And God said, today is a day of change. Today is a day of transformation, says the Lord. And God said, rise in your faith, says the Lord. And take back your gifting, your anointing. Take back the favor and take back the blessing that God has already set for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My brother, right on the back row, you have on a plaid shirt right there yes I believe you was in part of worship I'm not sure but amen is this your girlfriend with you she's not your girlfriend okay so we offer marriage counseling <laughs> you have one one wife one girlfriend right one girlfriend your wife's your girlfriend all right y'all please stand with me amen thank you Lord amen thank you just go ahead and put your arms around each other yeah, that validates it. Okay, we know. All right. <laughs> Amen. I just, as I just looked at you, I heard God say to tell you that this is a time of expansion for you, says the Lord. It's like you have finished the assignment that you've been on, and God says, I don't want you to get stuck in the place that you're at, and I'm closing the book on the last chapter. And I hear that God, uh, God say, I'm giving you an open door. And Revelation chapter 3 says that God will open a door that no man can close, and he'll close doors that no man can open. And he said, I've given 
you a little strength. I've given you all that you need to go through this door, to go through this gate, to go into this new season, says the Lord. And I hear God say, it's going to be a time of expansion. Get ready for promotion. Promotion is coming, says the Lord. And it's going to increase your faith to believe, to receive, says the Lord. And when you heard me sharing this testimony about breaking out of my limitation, God says, I'm breaking the two of you out of your limitation, says the Lord. And you're going to begin to dream the dreams of the Father, says the Lord. And God said, son, uh, be a priest in your own family. And God said, get out the family Bible and prayer and begin to decree over your family. And the Lord says, daughter, I love you with an everlasting love. And I, I could just see a hedge of protection that God has about you. And he said, I'm going to bless your personal life. I'm going to bless your marriage. I'm going to bless your home, says the Lord. And God said, I'm going to heal the two families. And God said, I'm going to settle some issues, says the Lord. And God said, there's going to be an integration. Now listen, when it comes to spiritual matters, there's almost a division in the family. And God said, I'm going to heal that division, says the Lord, because I'm giving you a freedom to walk forward into faith, says uh, God has a place for the two of you in worship. He has a place for you guys in warfare. He has a place for you guys as leaders in the kingdom of God. And the Lord said, I'm not going to have you stuck in one thing, says the Lord. And so God says, dream and dream big and break out. And, and I can hear, I hear like a spirit of blackmail. It's like, you know, sometimes the enemy tries to hold something over your head. And wh whatever that was, we just break it right now in Jesus' name. Your name is clear. Your credit is clear. Your ability is clear. Your open door of opportunity is clear. And God said, daughter, I'm going to use you as a warrior, and you're going to smear every attack of the enemy, says the Lord. So God said, arise, son and daughter. Have no fear, says the Lord. God said, the better, 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 better years are yet in front of you. And everything that the enemy tried to make bitter, I have sweetened it, says the Lord. Father, I charge them right now by the power of your love. Brother, I hear a song coming out of you, and the lyrics are going to be heart melting. They're going to be soul shaking. They're going to be earthquaking. There is going to be devil destroying. It's going to be faith releasing. And it's a sound of heaven that's going to come out of the inside of you. And it is going to shock you and astound you, says the Lord. But God said, I'm going to cause your name to be known. I'm going to cause your song to be heard. And I'm going to cause the ability that I put within you to be received, says the Lord. You're a good son, my brother, a good son. You're a good man. And your good seed, says the Lord. And I want you to walk with that confidence. I want you to walk with that anointing. I want you to walk with that favor. And I want you to walk with that authority in your, in your voice, says the Lord. Father, charge and bless them right now. Just let the kingdom of heaven rule over them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a praise offering, can we? <laughs> Amen. I'm going to have to start winding up here because, amen, Jesus is coming soon. All right. <laughs> Verse 3. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> so he said, enlarge the place of your tent. Let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Remember, break every limitation. And whenever you talk about enlargement, you talk about change. Say change. change. So in order to enlarge, you must change. You, you have to shift your mindset. As LifeGate, we are getting ready to go into a place that we have not been yet. Come on. And we're going to have to enlarge our faith. We're going to have to enlarge our, our commitment. We're going to have to enlarge our dedication. We're going to have to enlarge as a corporate body. Look at somebody and say, be faithful. Uh, why? Because God has set you in this place for such a time as this. And I can assure you, God is not going to enlarge this place unless he enlarges you. Because all enlargement comes through the church, the body of Christ. Amen. Look at somebody say, it's going to come through you. Amen. Amen. A, I'm speaking to us to enlarge our faith as well. Verse 3, for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. So he speaks about, amen, that, uh, that your descendants, he is not talking about just your children, amen, he is talking about the harvest of souls that is yet in you. And God said, I want you to be harvesters for my kingdom for such a time as this. Let me just challenge you, uh, each one of you, get your 10 most wanted hit list. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Get 10 people 
that you're going to witness to, you're going to pray for, you're going to prophesy to, you're going to check up on, you're going to uh, you're going to keep reminding them even though they don't like it, and you're going to break, get your ten most one head list, and don't let them go until you get them saved and into the kingdom. God, don't worry about saving the whole world. Get your 10 most wanted hit list. Come on, some of you get three, whatever, whatever. Amen. Uh, but begin to be determined, amen, that this is a time of breakthrough, and we're going to break through for the kingdom of God for such a time as this. Look at somebody say, it's our time. Amen. Ken, is it Dan? Is that right? Amen. Y'all want to stand with me, or you can stay seated. That'll get right on the front. Then you'll be taller than me. Amen. <laughs> but Dan and Ken, do you want to record this, or? Do you, do you have a phone? I like to just stretch your hands up here, amen, to them. And I haven't seen them for, I haven't seen him at all. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And don't know why other than God's just kept us busy in different directions. Amen. Are we ready, hon? Yeah. Amen. I, I just, I hear a word of the Lord to you. And God, the Bible says that favor comes from God. And I believe it's Isaiah uh, 61 and 7 that says that uh, all that Israel went through, God spoke to them and he said, I'm going to give you double back for all that you have gone through, all that you've lost, all that you've sown, all, all that you've suffered. I'm going to give you double. And the Lord says, daughter, I'm giving you double for all the trouble that you come through. People have no idea the, the places that you have walked through. But God said, you've not spent one moment, walked through one valley, you've not made it through one storm, you've not crossed one rough sea, but what I have not been there with you, says the Lord. And I've been your strength, I've been your help, I've been your support, I've been your life, I've been your joy, and I've been your provider, says the Lord. And the Lord said, son, I've anointed you for such a time as this. Now listen to me. I, I don't know you, Brother Dan, but you've been taught one way, you've learned one way, uh, but it was a way that God ordered for you. It was like God ordered your classroom, not just in school, but in the in the school of hard knocks, says the Lord. And the Lord says, you've learned some things and you've learned some lessons the hard way, says the Lord. But God said, you've learned well, son. And the Lord said, you've passed all the tests. And God said, I don't want there to be any regret in your life that you've had to come the way that you have got. You just need to know. Somebody else needs to hear this word. Just listen to me. You need to know that you're not second best. You're not second choice. You're not second rate. God said, son, you're a man right at the top, says the Lord. And God God says, I have a whole new vision, and I have a whole new dream before you. Now listen, God's going to bless you financially. He's going to bless you physically. He's going to bless you in your marriage. And God says that there's a blessing getting ready to come to you that you hadn't even thought of or dreamed about yet, says the Lord. And, but God said, you're going to be a builder of my kingdom, says the Lord. And, and Kim, I just hear God say, there's a prophetess mantle upon you. And it's like you have never removed the mantle. But God said, you've been weighted under the mantle and God said I'm taking the weight off of you says the Lord and God says that there's going to be a flourishing there's going to be a growing and you're going to know it by the vision by the dream and by the passion that I'm putting in you says the Lord and you're going to hear a clarity of the voice of the Lord and Dan I hear God say there's an apostolic fire on the inside of you says the Lord and God said I called you to be a man that would be a leader I called you to be one and God said that would be a coordinator and one one that would be an organizer, says the Lord, but I called you to be one that would be a wise master builder. And God said, son, you're going to work and build my kingdom, and you're going to build together, says the Lord. And I just hear God say, I'm painting the picture so clear. It is a brand new day. Old things have passed away. So God said, if the past is past, I don't want you looking at it. I want you to be pointed and look at the new thing that I'm going to do, says the Lord. And God said, get your hope and your expectation high, because I have a promise promise for you that I promised you many, many years ago that it is now time for it to be fulfilled, says the Lord. Whoa, oh, shaka bosai. I want everybody, just, uh, just lay your hands on your heart. That'll be a good play. Amen. Because I, what I'm saying to them right now, I'm saying to this entire congregation, God said, I'm going to bless you with land and more land and more land and more land, says the Lord. And God said, I, I'm going to increase you. I'm going to multiply you. And God said, I'm going to bless your equity. And God said, you're, gonna, you're always going to have money in the bank, says the Lord. And you're going to have more than enough. And you're going to be sowers in my kingdom. 
kingdom and you're going to be reapers of my kingdom, says the Lord. And God says, the cry of your heart, it will be fulfilled, says the Lord. I hear the word buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell. <laughs> I hear Jeremiah chapter 32. Amen. Listen to me. When Jeremiah was in prison and an impossible place, God positioned him to buy land while he was in jail. Come on now. And the Bible says because he took a step of faith and he bought the land, he broke a curse off of the land and houses and lands were multiplied and sold again. And the Lord said, I'm going to bless this house and land. When you have young people come into this house, I see, I see teenagers, 19, 18, 19, 20 years old and, and just in the early 20, buying land and owning equity. And God said, it's an anointing. It's a favor that I'm releasing upon. If you need a new home or you need another home or you need to advance the home you're in, there's an anointing here if you will activate your faith. God said that will shift you to a new place. So the Lord said, son and daughter, I called you to be leaders in my kingdom, says the Lord. And I can see where God has given you a lot of line and a lot of time. But God says, now I'll begin to narrow the time down, says the Lord. But God said, I've narrowed it according to your faith and I'm bringing you into alignment with your vision, says the Lord. And God said, I've been easy with you, but I want you to be eager for me, says the Lord. Now, Father, I charge these two right now. Oh, God, there's a dream, a vision, a passion in them. Oh, God, you have a work for them, Lord, that they've not even ascertained or thought of yet, Lord. And Father, I activate it in their heart and spirit now. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Time is getting so short. Amen. A couple right on the back row there. Amen. You have on, I think you followed us in the building. I'm not sure. I saw you somewhere. Where did I see you? Oh, in the back room. Okay. Thank you. Just stay seated with the baby there. Uh, you know their name at the sound booth? Amen. You got it. I just, as I just, I was just praying for them and I heard the Lord say, this is a brand new day for you. And God says, I'm going to do a new thing. Take Isaiah 55, where the Bible says that, uh, that God's thoughts and his ways are higher than ours. But God says, I want you to understand that my thoughts are fully attainable. I wasn't saying that you can't attain it. I was saying, I don't think in the lowly place. I think in, I think in the higher places, says the Lord. And God said, I'm bringing you up to a new standard of faith. And the Lord said, son, be begin to decree a thing, and it will be, says the Lord. And the Lord says, daughter, you're a dreamer of dreams, and I'm going to put new dreams and new visions in you. I can see you as a little baby, and God said, you was anointed uh, before you was conceived in your mother's womb, and even at your birthing, God said, there, uh, there was a sound of heaven that was released in you, and there's a song in you, there's a prophecy in you, there's a faith in you, there's a vision and a dream in you that you've never fully activated, and God says, I'm igniting it today. Day, says the Lord. And God says, son and daughter, you have an inheritance in my kingdom, and I want you to begin to draw upon the inheritance. The Bible says that God will give you the desires of your heart as long as you desire according to his word, purpose, and his plan, according to his commandment. And the Lord said, your desires have been pure, says the Lord. And God said, it is my desire to give you the desires of your heart. So I want you to begin to decree the desires of your heart, and you'll see them fulfilled, says the Lord. Father, I charge thee to Brother, you, you need to know there's a teacher on the inside of you, and God is going to near. I see you like a big fish on the end of a heavy fish line, and you're just a flopping and a flipping, and God says that, son, I'm going to reel you all the way in, says the Lord. And God said, I'm going to stabilize you and finalize you, says the Lord. And God said, the anointing and the gifting and the identity and the purpose that I have for your life, says the Lord. Father, charge him by the power of your word. My little sister here with a blonde hair, I must minister to you. You were singing this morning on the platform. Would you please stand? Amen. Amen. I didn't see any little babies, so you can stand. I'll live. Uh, <laughs> amen. What's your name? Brooke. Brooke, uh, Brooke I, I just hear the Lord say, daughter, the sky is the limit. And, and, and God says, I want you to dream. I don't want you to dream out of your pain. I don't want you to dream out of your failure. I don't want you to dream out of the things that tried to work against you. I want you to dream out of the heart of the Father, says the Lord. And God said, I'm putting a pure dream in you. And there's a spirit of excellence in you. And you're going to be a daughter at the top, says the Lord. And God says, speak a thing and believe it in your heart. And you will live it and you'll see it, says the Lord. And I hear God say, I'm putting a new song into your heart in your spirit. There's an anointing in you to break uh, the strongholds of the enemy. Uh, 
that you're going to touch so many people's lives. And God said, there's a, a compassion in you and a passion on the inside of you. All that you do in life is not just for yourself. You do for other people. And God said, you've been a giver. And God says, the seed that you have sown is going to come rolling back in. And God said, the dream I have for you is bigger than the dream you have for yourself, says the Lord. And God said, I'm going to give you better, and I'm going to fulfill you in a better way, says the Lord. God said, stay in faith, keep your joy, keep decreeing, keep believing, and just steady as you go, steady as you go, says the Lord. And God said, it's all coming together, and it's all going to work for good, and it's all going to fulfill my kingdom in you, through you, and for you, says the Lord. Father, I just charge and bless this daughter of Zion right now. Lord, Lord, she is such a gift into the kingdom of God. And Lord, ignite that fire of God upon her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stretch your hands up here to apostles, uh, pastors, uh, Mickey and Sandy. Amen. Y'all can just remain seated and just be comfortable. Amen. Can I just ask everybody, just pray in the Holy Spirit for a moment. So revi kala bovo shambravo sanande. In dala la bovo do revi ki tala bovo shambravo se. Making sense, I just hear the Lord say that you've been sojourners. And the Lord said, you have, you have journeyed in the land. And the Lord said, I have navigated you. And God said, I've moved you from this place to that place. And I changed this situation and that situation. And I shifted these people and brought in these people. And God said, I had you minister to one tribe, and then I give you another tribe. And, and you said, God, when does it all just level out? And the Lord said, like Bishop Hammond, this is your level, says the Lord. And God said, it's as level as going to get. But God said, I'm going to give you joy, and I'm going to give you excitement, and I'm going to give you faith. God said that uh, th there's a, you need to understand, there's a new authority from this day forward. There's a new authority at the sound of your voice. And God said, as you begin to speak a thing, God said, angels are going to carry the word, says the Lord, and they're going to penetrate the heaven. And God said, this is a time, son and daughter, that I'm going to open the heavens. And I just hear a season of teaching on faith. And God said, uh, there, there's a whole new wave of my spirit that is coming, son and daughter. And God said, there's some areas of faith, and I want you to begin to teach on faith, says the Lord, and get the church focused on faith because God said, I'm going to inspire their faith. And God said, You're going to, there's going to be so much joy in you. God said, your people are going to begin to prosper. All that come, all that are faithful, all that are tithers, all that are submitted under authority, all that are teachable, all that are hungry, God said, when they come, God said, there is a faith activation and a faith released. And it's like they come through the door one way and they leave and they say, what happened? I don't know, but something happened in me and things are not going to stay the way they were. And God said, you're going to see lives change, more mature people, and I'm going to grow you quickly, says the Lord. And I just hear God say to tell you, you're working on phase one, and I'm already on phase three, says the Lord. And God said, phase three, I've not even allowed you to see yet, says the Lord. And I hear God say, in three years, I'm going to begin to open up the nations to you. And God said, get your worshipers ready for nations. Uh, get, get your prophets ready for nations. Get your teachers ready for nations says the Lord. Uh, there is at least two nations that, that LifeGate is going to sow and invest into, and God's going to give it to you as a vision. And God said, you're going to see miracle signs and wonders in the nation like you have never seen before, says the Lord. And God said, this is a whole new time of stirring, and I'm not just going to let things just level out, says the Lord. And Sandy, I hear the Lord say, I'm going to bring you back to dreams and visions, and it's like you're going to rewrite the first book, says the Lord. And God said, there's a new inspiration, there's a new dedication, and God said there's a whole new release on dreams and visions, says the Lord. And God said, I'm activating that as, a, as an anointing even upon this house, says the Lord. And God said, uh, when I spoke and said that I'm going to release the, the wealth of the wicked or the wealth of the world into the righteous, God said, I'm going to begin to release dreams and visions of strategies of breakthroughs, says the Lord. And God said, the wealth is being unlocked, says the Lord. And God said, 
said, I want you to focus on the people. And God had a hard time getting Moses just to focus on the people and quit focusing on the problem. Focus on the people, says the Lord. For God said, I'm going to break them through, says the Lord. And God said, through the breakthrough, I'm going to break you through, says the Lord. I hear the Lord say, your building is going to be paid for. Decree it. Believe it. I, they're, they're, I just, I'm, I'm prophesying. I know that I am. But there are many, there are many of you in here. There are many of you in here that are going to give a thousand. Some are going to give ten thousand. I saw one giving forty thousand. Some are going to give twenty thousand. Get ready for the blessing. Begin to think outside. Remember my limitation. I didn't want to look farther because I looked in my but my familiarity. God says, break out of your familiarity, and this is going to be a commitment between you and God. And God is going to bless you, says the Lord. And God says, son and daughter, you're going to see the supernatural in a way that you have never seen before, says the Lord. Now listen, God's going to do a whole new thing. Can I, Joshua, is Joshua still here? Can you come stand up here by this man or woman of God? Do you mind? Uh, Joshua, I don't, uh, I, I don't even know you, but I've been using your name this morning. <laughs> hey, just, just stand by them. I just, uh, I, I, I saw this in the spirit this morning, and I heard the word son. Now, I teach a lot on sonship and spiritual fathering, and, and I have a lot of spiritual sons. And so, uh, but I just heard the Lord say, you're a son. And the Lord said, you're not an adopted child, and you're not just accepted and just loved and just treated. No, you're a son, says the Lord. And God said, there's an inheritance that I have for you. And I heard God say that there's going to be a kingdom release on worship that you have not experienced yet, says the Lord. Now, I, I hear that God says, the anointing that is upon you is not only to a originate and to facilitate but it's to reproduce and God said there's a reproducing anointing upon you and the Lord said the time will come son when you'll sit on the front row and you'll have team one team two team three team four team five and the Lord said and, and there'll be rotation of worshipers and guess what I hear the Lord say that the worshipers of the teens in the house will be greater than that on the platform says the Lord and God said son I'm going to bring you into a heavenly experience of my throne room like you have have never known before, says the Lord. And I'm going to give you a revelation of the Father's heart, and you're going to write songs in relation to the Father's heart. You understand that we're living right now in Malachi 4, 5, and 6, amen, that there, we're living in a fatherless generation. And God said, I'm going to use you, son, to reach the multitudes of, of fatherless homes and, and motherless homes, says the Lord. And God said, they're going to come. They're going to come by the scores, says the Lord. And build beautiful buildings. But if you had a big barn, it, it might be quicker and faster because you have to keep expanding it because they're going to keep coming, says the Lord. And God said, you're going to see healings, miracles, signs, and wonders. And the Lord said, I'm going to bring a divine reversal uh, in, this, uh, in this kingdom shift, says the Lord. And in this fatherless generation, I'm bringing a kingdom shift and God said, it's not just going to be one coming in there. They're going to come thousands at a time, says the Lord. And so God says, get yourselves ready. Let your song be louder. Let your heart pant faster, says the Lord. And God said, let your spirit be stirred deeper. And the Lord says, son, I'm taking you deep into my word, says the Lord. And I'm going to give you revelation that is going to bring the word freedom into my house, says the Lord. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And you're going to be a a freedom implementer, implementer, a freedom activator, and you're going to be a, a freedom. Uh, the Lord says that uh, sets people to a whole new place of faith, says the Lord. So the Lord says, sons and daughters, God said this is a whole new day. And uh, Joshua, uh, there's a greater plan that God has for your life. And I want to break a, a hidden fear or a subtle fear. It's not an evident fear, or it's not a loud screaming fear. It's just a subtle fear, but it will keep you in one place. Of th It'll keep you in a safe place. And God says, son, I I'm going to have to get you out into the deeper water, says the Lord. And I got to, I don't want you to have any fear. I want you to trust me. You know, out of all the apostles, Peter was such a unique man. It's like he got himself in more trouble than all the other apostles. <laughs> but guess what? He was always faithful. He was always there. 
And he ended up being one of the greatest apostles in the Bible. And he was one of the few that really would dare to step out of a boat and walk on water. And I hear God telling you, that's what you're going to do, son. You're going to be bold. God said, you'll step out of the norm. You'll step out of the comfortable. You'll step out of the familiar. And you'll step into the deeper water of life, says the Lord. Whoa, God's getting ready to bless you, Joshua, as an inheritance, as a son, and as a spiritual son, says the Lord. Now, Father, I charge them by the power of your love and the power of your grace. Huraka. Next time I come, uh, and don't know when that will be, but uh, Lord willing, I, I see... I, like I see a hundred leaders behind you and God said they're God said they're ready they're able they're capable and God said they're they're stable and God said they're they're eager at heart and the Lord said to lead my kingdom for such a time as this uh, you're trying to train ten God says I'm gonna put hundreds behind you says the Lord see as big as you can dream God says my thoughts and my ways are still higher and I'm able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or ascertain, says the Lord. Father, I activate this word of faith in them, this message of faith, this prophetic faith, this apostolic faith. Oh, God, this faith of, of Davidic worship, oh, God. Father, that it's all going to a brand new level. God, they're going to impact universities. They're going to impact colleges. They're going to impact schools. And they're going to bring transformation, Lord, even in the governmental realm. In Jesus' name, I pray. And and Joshua, your voice is going to be heard worldwide, says the Lord. And God said you can be as subtle and quiet and hidden away as you want. But God says when the time comes, I'm going to use you. And I just want you to say like Isaiah of old, here am I, Lord, send me. And the Lord said, son, I will send you, says the Lord. And I'll always send you with a word and with a mantle of anointing, says the Lord. Father, I just charge them right now. God, this healing for Dr. Sandy. Oh, God, she's going to be so much greater. Oh, Lord, this miracle in Apostle Mickey. Oh God, he's going to be so much stronger. He's not going to be stressed out over this building, over the finances, or over, uh, Lord, uh, Father, we reject that right now in Jesus' name. God, you're going to bless your people, and your people are going to build the house. And so, Father, I charge him right now. And Lord, we charge Joshua, oh God, that he has such a confidence in his sonship, in his authority, in his manhood. Oh God, in his future, his anointing, his gifting. Oh God, Lord, he'll never, never, never walk with with doubt and unbelief, but he'll always walk, Lord, in that bold, strong faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Can you? Amen. I'm going to give it back to pastors here in just one second, but little sis right here with a pink on. I just saw you for a moment Friday night, but just, just something the Lord wants to say to you. He says, I love you with an everlasting love, and I'm bringing you to a new place of faith and a new place of trust, says the Lord. And God says, don't lay your vision down and don't, don't reel the dream back in, says the Lord. And God said, I want you to believe more adamant today than you ever have in your life, says the Lord. And God said, the place you're in is just for a moment. It's just for a time. But God said, there's a greater place. There's a greater fulfillment, says the Lord. And God said, I'm your healer. I'm your deliverer. I'm your establisher. I'm your provider. I'm your lover. I'm your friend, says the Lord. And God says, daughter, at every interval of your life, I will meet you there, says the Lord. And God says, stir your faith to a brand new level. I hear you coming into such alignment with the vision of this house. And God says that I've put you here for a purpose, says the Lord. He wants you here to pray. He wants you here to speak positive. He wants you here to reject the negative, And he wants you here to implement and activate the vision, says the Lord. Father, I just charge her to a whole new day of excitement and kingdom release in her. In Jesus' name, I pray one more and then I must, I must turn this over. A brother sitting back here, you have on a white shirt with your hands folded. Do you mind standing with me? Okay, if you don't mind, just, you know, what's your name, brother? Eric. Eric? Aaron? Amen. Like, okay. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Like Moses' brother? Hallelujah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you have a brother named Moses? No. <laughs> Aaron, my eyes have been focused on you through this entire meeting. And God said, this is a season that I'm going to focus on you. God says, I've never left you. I've never forsaken you. And I have never given up on you. And the Lord said, I've given you the space. 
I've given you the grace. I've given you the time. I've given you all that you need, Aaron, uh, to build the man, says the Lord. And listen, it has not been easy. I would love to hear your story sometime because you have a powerful story. People have no idea how close calls have come in your life. But the Lord said, yet, like Paul the Apostle, I have saved you out of them all, says the Lord. And I saved you, Aaron, for such a time as this. And God said, this is the time that I'm going to ignite a fire in your heart. And God said, I'm going to settle some issues. I'm going to finalize some relationships. And God said, everything that has been dangling and just, God said, we're going to trim it up, says the Lord. And God said, this is the beginning of a whole new day and a whole new season of your life. The last chapter is finished, says the Lord. And I want to write a brand new chapter. And God said, all I want you to do is put your hand in mine. And I want you to trust me, says the Lord. As I saved you in the past, I'll work miracles for you in the future, says the Lord. And I, I'm hearing like Caleb and Joshua. They were ones that decreed, you know, I have been faithful. I've been, fa and you are a faithful man. Not everybody has believed in you. Not everybody has reached out to you. But God said, I have never left you. I've never forsaken you. And you've been faithful with what I've given you, says the Lord. And like Caleb and Joshua, they said, they said, Bless me because I've been faithful. And the Lord, and, and it was Caleb that said, give me my mountain. And I hear you, that God said, this is the time for you to decree, give me my mountain. Give me my inheritance. And everything that the devil tried to rob, steal, and kill, God said, I'm ready to restore back to you in a manifold way and a better way, says the Lord. Father, I just charge this man right now. God, all hurt, all pain, Lord, all separation, all isolation, all that orphan spirit that tried to orphan him and keep him com from being comfortable with love and home and acceptance. And God, just break all that off of him right now, Lord. Father, I decree this is a free man, an able man, a stable man. And this is going to be a man of impact. And this is going to be a man of vision and a man of fulfillment. And God said, even the money that you lost, God said, I'm able to restore. And even the promotion that got intercepted and you got rejected, I'm able to reestablish, says the Lord. And so God says, son, just begin to decree a thing and believe it, and you'll see the grace of the Lord upon your life. Father, charge him now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Can we give Amen. a go, Lord, a good hand clap today? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you blessed? Amen. Set an old man down. Wow. <laughs> you know, uh, I was just sitting here, Apostle, preaching and ministering, and, and uh, Thank you, Father. I know I handed this, the media team at least six to eight different scriptures, and he got through three <clears throat> verses, not, not scriptures, just verses. And so we know that the flow of the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit takes over, we know that things begin to function and happen. So that, so what a blessing to LifeGate. Uh, I want to give you an opportunity. I know we, this is just an offering for Apostle Leon. Uh, if you will, if you're giving cash, please just uh, get an envelope so we can keep accountable and be accountable with that. If you're writing a check, just make it out to LCI, and uh, uh, we'll make sure that you know it'll go into account. We're going to give Apostle one offering, and so, uh, but regardless. What a blessing, the body of Christ. You're, when you sow a seed into someone, you're sowing in them so that their needs are met when they travel uh, wherever they go. You know, sometimes, you know, I, don't, I know we've traveled quite a bit ourselves, and sometimes people say, well, won't you come in? We'll give you a love offering. And after I left, I felt like they didn't love me very much. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> come on. It's, it just works that way. I remember ministering for hours and hours and I got a $50 offering. It didn't even pay for my hotel or my gas. You know what? It's not about money. It's not about the issue. It's about obedience, being obedient to the Lord. But when we give, see, when I give and I sow a seed into Dr. Leon, I'm expecting something coming back. Why? Because it's a seed. Tithe belongs to the story. The offering we can give to whoever whatsoever, and that is where we get our blessing up on it. And so if you can also give online, if you didn't bring a check with you or something, you can go to lifegatechurch.org, and you can actually give it online, and we can pick that up. Um, and it has a time on there and all that kind of stuff. And so I can see that it goes to him. And so uh, if you want to do that, that's, that's okay as, to, as well. And so if you got your million-dollar check written out, that's good. Uh, 
Leon's already told me he'd give it all for the building fund. And so no, I'm just I'm just teasing, just then, not really. But uh, I'd like for you to stretch your hands towards Apostle Leon. And those who are close to him, just lay your hand on him. Father, we thank you for a man of God. That, Father, he gives more than he could ever get. He's got so much seed sown around this world, God, that, Father, we begin to call the harvest in now for his campus, for his vision and purposes that you have put him on. Lord, that you know his purpose. You know his destiny better than he knows himself. Father, we thank you that we're calling forth the seed uh, multiplication uh, begin to come to Christian International uh, Worship Center in Indiana. Father, we thank you that needs to be met there. Lord, he's traveling, sowing seed and, and giving of, of himself, which means that, Lord, you can give back to him. And so, Father, as this seed is being taken today for him, Father, we thank you that it'll multiply not only to him but from the giver. Father, that you said you if we give, it just shall be given. So, Father, we speak to Indiana and we say you will prosper. In Jesus' name, Father, we put you first. You said, and all these things would be added unto us. And so, Father, we thank you as Leon is given of himself and giving of what you have planted within him. We thank you, Lord, that you will not only renew his body and renew his strength, but, Father, we thank you that you would meet his need. Because you said, Lord, you never meet our greed, but you'll meet our need. So, Father, I thank you for that right now. Even before he gets home, there's going to be a check in the mail. There's going to be a blessing for him before he even gets back to where he needs to be. So, Father, I thank you in advance for checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, and all that we've, we have decreed. So, Father, you said decree a thing, and it shall be established. So, Father, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. As we go ahead and receive offering this morning. I want you to know that that uh, <clears throat> when Pastor Leon came in, you know, he's been a servant to Dr. Sandy and I. I mean, what a man of God just to be around. I, I mean, I enjoyed traveling with him years ago, but uh, that was a, from a position of a novice of looking and seeing what what is this and what's going on and, and even doing probably silly things that he thought that I didn't even know I was doing. But at the same time, it was a growth pattern in time for me. And then... You know, how many know that God has divine connections? <clears throat> it's just like when Dr. Sandy had three months to live, and she, they said, hey, let's go see the prophets. We didn't even know the prophets even existed. Nobody talked about them in our fundamentalism. And so as we began, went down there, and, and she could have went into any room in Christian International, but she didn't. She happened to be in a room with Dr. Leon Walters and Dr. Mary Crum. And, you know, two saints of God that, are now still in our lives and Dr. Mary has actually taught Dr. Sandy the purposes you know and Dr. Leon has actually taught me a lot that he has no idea what whether I came from and what I've done but but I know this that God has sent an incredible blessing to LifeGate he will be back come on he I said he will be back but it, it won't be in this place it'll be in that place amen and so I, I'll tell you what I'm going to wage the war of the Word of God. First Timothy 1.18 says, uh, wage war of the prophecies that have came up on you. That's what Paul told Timothy. You take a prophetic word and you wage war with it, just like we did with Dr. Sandy's word that she'll live and not die. We walk the floors at nighttime, well, in morning time, all night long. Lord, pray in the Word of God. We played it in the sleep. I put it back to back on a tape called a boom box back in those days they just the automatic reverse that just came out and i went down to radio shack and bought one and put that tape on and recorded it time after time after time on a 92 minute tape we played it in the night when we were sleeping the word was still proclaiming that she will live and not die why because the bible's told me and i would listen i'm just i was just and a novice enough to know that 1 Timothy 1.18, which was taught to me, which I'd never seen it before, wage war with the prophecy that have came up on you. And I declared, I said, God, if this is you, she will live. And so we played that word and we decreed that word. And look what she's done today. Incredible. Stand with me this morning as we worship the king and, and our just, I, I, think, I just felt like they just need a good round of applause for God, what he's done today. Come on, can we do that? He's good. He's awful. He's good. He's awesome, awesome God.
Father, we thank you this morning for that, that your light shine upon us. Lord, may your face be made to shine upon us this week. Give us the grace, oh God, this week to walk through the challenges that we walk through in this world. But, Lord, that we might be example of Christ within us. Lord, let us be the Jesus with skin on. Lord, let us be that testimony of someone who needs to hear your name. So, Father, put people in our way this week. That, Father, we have to look up and say, look what Jesus has done. And say, look what the Lord hath done for me. So, Father, we give you praise and glory for the outcome. And we give you...